go get them again. Welcome back to the Robozoid channel. I'm your host, Mark, and today on the docket, we have a first impression unboxing video on the brand of Paco Rabanne, and it is from the uber popular 1 million line, this one called 1 million Elixir. So it's, of course, piggybacking on the name of Elixir that we are going to see multiple more flankers in 2024. So this is not a first impression. No, this is not deja vu. I did a sampling samples on this one back in November, 2023. So we got a couple months behind it now, and we're gonna see in April, 2024, now bottle in hand, has my tune changed on this one? And I remember it was a decant that I bought. So it was a fairly, like, it's not like a little, little lucky scent sample dabber. No, no, this was an atomizer and all. And I think I had like three, four wearings on it. So usually those sampling samples are pretty bang on in regards to my taste. I'm, I'm not really gonna drastically change. I'm not gonna be that fragrance reviewer that I'm like, oh, I'm learning to like it. Uh, try to sell something a la Gen Sense. No, um, I, when you're, you're 10 plus years in this fragrance game and you've smelt thousands of fragrances, like a lot of YouTube reviewers, um, there's a line. And we all know there's a line. There's some that you love, some that you hate, like Invictus. There's nothing Invictus can do to, to really, for me to appreciate it. I don't like it. The only thing different between me and another reviewer is that I don't sugarcoat it. Like, I'm not gonna try to please you. Oh, it's not for me. Maybe it's for you. Or, oh, I'm learning to like it. It's, it's, it's starting to, no, no. Like when you're 10 plus years in, it's either you like it or you don't. You know, we don't have a gradual, like maybe niche, like niche fragrances, like musk or, 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 things more animalic, your taste may change. But other, going backwards, your taste really doesn't change that much. Like a Tommy Hilfiger fragrance that I smelt in the 90s isn't gonna gradually go on top of my list in 2020. Like I'm not going backwards here. So uh, I, I may like it a little bit more, like a smudge a little bit more, or it has a sentimental feeling to me because I've went through years with it. But there's nothing like an Invictus that has you know, I'm gonna wear it three, four times and then that's it, it's it's nothing. Anyway, this is a fragrance that um, we're gonna see if I change my tune, but it's not gonna be very drastic if I do. Uh, my thoughts from the sample, um, I'll just save you some time if you haven't seen that, is that I was not too impressed by it. If I remember correctly, is that it, uh, the nose behind this is Quentin Bish and, oh, Bish, uh, Bish is a, with the 1 million and the Lama line, he is making a lot of money, but um, it has a vanilla Tonka backbone that um, a lot of them have. I mean, he really is stripping a lot of the personality out of these once great fragrances, honestly. Um, Lama, still great personally, the OG, I think is one of the best in the game in regards to that lineup. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to put something in front of it personally. That's my personal opinion. Um, and same with One Million, it has that sentimental value to me. There is some One Millions that I feel like are a little better personally for me, but other than that, the OG is the OG. Um, so Bish, uh, this one I believe has uh, that green apple note in it, so it's a little different than your run-of-the-mill suede, leathery, orangey, cinnamon-like combo from the original. It was shocking actually for me. So uh, obviously this is not an unboxing either. This is a tester that I got. Um, I am going to be decanting it. That's why I have that there. So I will plug this if you're interested in it. If not, fine. Um, so let's get into it. Let's see if, uh, let's remind myself of it and I'll give you my thoughts. If you want something a little more in depth, I do have that sampling samples that I did, you know, back in 2023, so it's not a super old video, uh, but uh, yeah, it has four wearings in it. So you're gonna, I'm gonna talk about longevity projection and the dry down. This is more of a top notes and kind of remind me of the fragrance and kind of give people, if you maybe just stumble upon this, um, you know, some thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it on my skin after. It's gonna it's gonna be my center of the day before I uh, start decanting this bad boy. So, up top. Oh yeah, yeah, so different. Um, 
that cinnamon and an orange combo long gone. Um, you're met with a green apple note, like, and I think I remember because it, it's bringing me back now to a uh, 90s Hugo Boss. And I'm trying to remember, I think it was Hugo that has that green apple note from Hugo Boss. I think it's that one. Um, yeah, like a synthetic green apple, fruity. It kind of reminds me of, and I think I actually said this in the sampling samples, it reminds me of the pear in Ultramol where it kind of changed the, the scope of that particular release. Um, kind of changed it quite a bit in the introduction with that pear and you're just like, oh, okay. This is where this is going, replacing that orangey feel with a green apple, synthetic green apple thing. Yeah, it's got a fruitiness. It's got a watery rose backing that. Um, and then there's some vanillic tendencies that are already pushing through already. Yeah, and there's a little bit of that leathery aspect. So let's put it on skin. I'm gonna go, usually I go the other way, but let's uh, go here and remind me of it again on skin yeah it doesn't obviously does not change much in the introduction yeah so there's a little bit of cedar here at the same time so yeah green apple a watery rose so the rose in one million I felt the original ha had more density to it. Um, it had thickness to it, that floral. And depending on which flaker you're talking about, there's the intense and then there's the absolutely gold. And those were flakers that were kind of forgotten from the 1 million line and it, they'd get denser and thicker. And yeah, this fruity aspect is just candied, but very Hugo Boss, like, like almost kind of like cheap, that that's where I'm going with that. So the rose itself is more of a watery, um, less dense rose. There is also another floral osmanthus is in here. Osmanthus um, likes to give off apricot in a lot of fragrances. I'm not getting it here, which would have been nice. It really is giving more of its floral tendencies than anything. It's giving more of its milky, um, woody and leathery tones too because you can smell the leathery tones, which again, the rose and leather kind of putting those together starts making you think of 1 million a little bit. There's a little bit of an herbal quality too. Davana is in here too. So you got that green aspect. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of spice here that I don't think is in the note breakdown. A little bit of it. There's definitely some cedar and I don't think I got cedar in my sample. It's always interesting to go back to those, you know, months later and kind of go, oh, I got this out of that. So, but mostly the theme here is fruity floral. And again, there's gonna be a lot of male um, people that may not like where this one is going. There's a couple of these one millions that tend to go a little more floral than anything. But there's that vanillic bomb and now it's starting to get back to me that, yeah, this is where this is gonna go. It's gonna go in that bish territory with that vanillic bomb um, coming into the scent as the back end. And I remember this one, um, and again, I'm trying to jog my memory from that sampling samples, but I remember, you know, that, that fake fruity green apple thing, a little bit of those floral tendencies, a little bit of interesting parts, but then the vanillic fog comes into play and kind of ruins everything, um, which it did, you know, he did that vanilla fog with my Lamal, my baby, and I'm still kind of peeved at him ruining that. Um, yeah, it's starting to get heavy on the vanilla now. Yeah, so one million elixir, kind of pulls away from it. Like it's almost, again, like Bish does, kind of gets rid of the personality of these top sellers that they don't even smell like their original compositions. And maybe that's the whole thought process. 
Um, there's bits and pieces in this one that I feel a little bit of the OG, but again, um, I think I'm right where I was four months ago with this one. It's just an okay 1 million release. Nothing crazy. Um, not a great release at all, personally. Just another, yeah, another designer fragrance that kind of smells like everything else on the shelf. Yeah, so, tu es fini, you're gone. And yeah, so, yeah, 1 million elixir. An okay release, you know, if you're missing out on it, you're not missing out. Like this is not something that is going to stand the test of time. This is going to get uh, discontinued and voila, it's gone and forgotten. Um, not like it's original 1 million. That the only thing that people talk about 1 million, it got reformulated. It's not long lasting as it used to be. They People call it dated, I guess, after a while, after like several brands have tried to emulate it. I can see why. Um, still a great scent. You still need to give kudos to the starter, the one that started it all in that job. So yeah, this one, uh, a pass really. Um, so now I'm going to be decanting it. You can find it on fragflex.com. 10 mil decanter are going to be coming soon on fragflex. And you can use my code uh, TFG10 and get 10% off of decants and anything on that site. Great site because you can get the decant and the full bottle if you wish to do so. Um, so it's one of those that, uh, it's a Swiss Army knife of a, a website. Um, so go check them out. Go check out the decants I'm gonna be making shortly on these. Give me some time, I'll get them done and ship them off. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours on, on this line. Um, what would you like to see them do with a 1 million line? Because now it's starting to get kind of redundant. Um, what can you do with this line to make it exciting again? That is something. Um, that is a great question. And your thoughts on this particular release? I'm very much lukewarm on this release. Um, not something I would jump out and uh, purchase myself. And as always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Have a good one.